Hi, I'm Dave Gardy for Cybersecurity TV from our studios here near Washington, D.C. for this special presentation, another in the series of compliance automation with SteelCloud. And joining me here in our studio is Brian Hajos, who's the COO of SteelCloud. Brian, thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you. And now also via Zoom is Glenn Hernandez, who's a former captain retired in the U.S. Coast Guard, and a former U.S. Coast Guard CISO. He's also chair of the ASEA Zero Trust Strategies Subcommittee. Glenn, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Let's Great start. Let's you. start with you. What should organizations? Why should organizations care about zero trust? And if there's any analogies you can give us. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Dave, for having me on with your audience today, and great to join Brian and you. Um, we're here virtually. So I, I really think when it comes to zero trust, it, it's really a mindset uh, that organizations need to embrace. Um, it's, it's really different from the traditional cybersecurity practice where you have the cold castle and moat um, analogy of trying to protect uh, your organization and, and folks thinking about digging a deeper moat or building uh, the higher fences and, and trying to understand that really it's about the organizational purpose. You know, what were organizations design, designed to do and how are you going to protect the crown jewels of that organization in the data and transactions? And so really it comes from leadership on how they're able to embrace and internalize zero trust into all the facets of the organization, not just the IT department and not just, uh, you know, the cybersecurity folks. It needs to be embraced by the organization so they can achieve what they were purposed to do. Excellent. What about your perspective, Brian? Well, Steel Cloud comes at, at most of the uh, issues we deal with from a compliance standpoint. And I think that uh, zero trust has moved from a, a, an interesting and, and vital cyber philosophy um, to it is in the process of being mandated. So uh, because of that, we are very interested in areas that we can help our government customers meet their objectives as it relates to zero trust. Okay. Now, uh, Glenn, you are a, on, again, chair of the ASEA Zero Trust Strategies Subcommittee. Can you give us a quick perspective of what that's all about? I uh, appreciate it, uh, the question. So with regards to understanding and really differentiating uh, what the term zero trust means uh, from a policy standpoint or a strategy versus what you see uh, in terms of advertising from technology, uh, there's really sharp differences in my mind um, how folks really need to look at uh, zero trust. And so seeing that gap uh, between the inconsistencies and the uh, mistaken assumptions of what zero trust was, I, I took it upon an effort with AFSIA to really bring groups from government, from industry and academia to learn from uh, operational applications of zero trust. So we focus uh, mostly on the strategic aspects um, and that differs uh, somewhat from other groups and uh, we'll be happy to detail those uh, later. But um, we've had folks uh, from CISA, uh, Sean Connolly joined us. Uh, he gave a great example about the baseball stadium and, and how uh, zero trust could be applied to that, uh, to that analogy is if you're coming into a baseball stadium, you get the ticket to come in. And uh, once in the Castle Moat uh, scenario, you're able to go anywhere within the stadium, do whatever you want to do and um, sit, see, you know, sit anywhere you want to sit. Well, if you apply zero trust to the baseball stadium scenario, you are identified uh, by who you are when you come in. And uh, when you go to any portion of that stadium, whether it's to the concession stand or you go to a seat, there's going to be some verification check that you are indeed who you are and what access are you privileged to have to access that part of the stadium. And so there's uh, that constant verification, uh, which is an aspect of zero trust and also uh, assuming breach. And so uh, there's really a, a mindset change in terms of how to apply cybersecurity uh, to an organization. And, um, and I have other examples I'm willing to share uh, if you have, guys have time. And what differentiates your activities in zero trust from others? So uh, within, within the subcommittee, uh, like I said, we really focus on the strategic aspects. And so the government has come out with policies at the executive order last year on cybersecurity, uh, discussing zero trust. 
And then uh, more recently, the National Security Memorandum number eight uh, discusses uh, zero trust for the national security systems and, and the um, intelligence community. So it's definitely taking a foothold uh, in, in terms of where policy is going. And I think the effort that we want to uh, focus is on is the organizational impacts, uh, the insight and the lessons learned from how organizations are adopting zero trust and so we don't focus on the technology exclusively. Of course, technology is part of it, uh, but we want to emphasize how organizations can learn uh, from others to develop sound uh, cybersecurity and zero trust uh, policies. Brian, what differentiates your zero trust activities at Steel Cloud? I think ours is more, ours are more foundational, looking at the things that organizations have today and how they can be uh, implemented better. So we. Uh, we look at uh, cyber hygiene being compliant with their their controls. Uh, this is mentioned uh, both in the DOD uh, document on zero trust, but also the CISA document talking about CDM. So those good practices are a foundation. Uh, also the validation step. And I, I would add to Glenn's uh, uh, comment about the uh, baseball stadium that uh, not only you, you as a person or you as a user on the network, but you also have a computer or thing. So not only are they gonna check who you are, but they're gonna check in your purse or your bag again every time you go to the concession station. So we, we realized that, that one of the big changes in Zero Trust is uh, instead of just getting validated once at the perimeter of the network, as Glenn mentioned at the baseball stadium, uh, you're gonna get validated multiple times, not just you as a person using two-factor authentication, uh, but the computer, the network, or the infrastructure you're on to make sure that it has a level of compliance in order for you to access the data that, that um, um, you're looking to access. So um, we are building blocks in, in order to allow our customers to do the foundational issues. So um, the other kind of more whiz-bang or futuristic things that Zero Trust will entail that they're prepared for those. And what role does compliance automation play in implementing a zero trust mindset? Well, as I mentioned, uh, 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 the compliance is a foundation. There are certain assumptions that uh, any cyber philosophy, including zero trust, um, uh, will have on what is in place. And so if it assumes that you're compliant, that certain holes or certain vulnerabilities in your infrastructure uh, have been plugged, because you've complied um, um, with your hardening guides and you've deployed uh, secure, secure configurations, um, it, you know, it, it's, it, again, it's the foundation. So uh, we help organizations build that technical foundation so that they can add the zero uh, trust pieces as they move down, um, you know, that path. So I'm going to ask each of you this. Uh, what have you learned about zero trust in the last 18 months and what are you going to be focusing on for zero trust in 2022? Let's start with Glenn. Yeah, thank you, Dave. So this has been very fascinating to me to watch, um, you know, given my past experience uh, of looking at cybersecurity threats and vulnerabilities in, the, in organizations and really trying to come up with sound strategies. And, and when it comes to zero trust, it, it's really about uh, leadership, of course. It's got to have buy-in from the entire organization. Uh, like I said, not just the IT department or the folks that focus on sub cybersecurity. It's really got to be embraced in all aspects of the organization so that they can understand that there are threats in all aspects of the organization, like we've seen with supply chain, like we've seen with, you know, the third party uh, associations um, and the cyber physical aspects in, in IoT. So it, it's really all encompassing mindset that, that folks really need to look at when it comes to zero trust. And when we look into the future, um, it's going to be how well organizations are able to manage and prioritize the adoption of these principles uh, in not only in their policy, but into their infrastructure, because it's not something that's a lift and shift that you really have to change drastically. Uh, there are elements uh, with, you know, that's come from CDM and uh, some of the stuff that uh, Brian's already worked on in regards to uh, compliance automation that can benefit organizations already. And so having individuals with the expertise to speak uh, zero trust principles uh, are very important. 
but the I can't emphasize enough the buy-in support from leadership in affecting uh, sound uh, zero trust principles. Brian, your zero trust activities of the past 18 months, and what do you see for 2022? Well, it, it, uh, our activities have been really following uh, the guidance of the government, um, how they see this being implemented and rolled out, and, and what problems uh, enterprises may have in some of the uh, basic uh, zero trust concepts. So the thing that we have really focused on in the last really nine months is, is the concept in zero trust, as is, is Glenn had mentioned, you're going to be validated constantly, not just you as a person, two-factor authentication, um, but your computer that you're, you're working from. And so how can we make it palatable to allow an organization to go through the validation steps necessary to provide you know, their concept of zero trust without impacting users and availability and productivity of the workforce? And so that's really the area that that, that we've really worked on is providing tools that allow an organization to validate compliance at whatever level and whenever um, they need to do it. Glenn, from a technical standpoint, can you give me some perspective of how the world changes for someone trying to implement zero trust? No, thank you, Dave. So when it comes to technology, obviously many innovations uh, over many years have led us to this point uh, and understanding how we can secure our organizations. But when it comes to zero trust, I'm very skeptical of um, companies that say that they can provide zero trust because like I said, it's a mindset, it's a strategy. So, uh, so I'm really looking to see how technologies can enable uh, the adoptions of zero trust, any of the aspects of the uh, devices, um, identity governance, um, the constant, and verification um, so that you can always scrutinize every transaction that happens uh, to really uh, enable organizations to function properly and effectively. Uh, but like I said earlier, it all comes down to that prioritization. You can't protect everything. So organizations have to have proper categorization of data and, and be able to classify what's most important. And I think automation activities and tools uh, like uh, Steel Cow provides, I, I think can be benefit, beneficial uh, to organizations if they have those type of technologies, because uh, trying to do it manually, it, it's not going to be possible. There's just too much information uh, and automation's got to be part of the solution. Same question, Brian, how does the world change from a technical standpoint for somebody trying to implement zero trust? Well, I think I think I would agree with Glenn. It, uh, you know, it isn't a product and isn't even a product suite. It's a, a set of technical capabilities that are integrated together to allow the organization to execute its mission. Uh, Steel Cloud, we know what our swim lane is. We know what we do well, and we know uh, traditionally what we have what we have done and helped our customers. Um, how they can do more of it quicker, and we can interface with the other technologies that will be implemented for zero trust. So. Um, it, it really is, is uh, uh, you know, that philosophy and the maturity of thought that allows an organization to picture kind of the components that need to be put in place along their zero trust journey and what they need to do first is foundational and how they move down, down that, uh, that journey. Glenn, if people want to find out more about what's going on with the AFSEA Zero Trust Strategies Subcommittee, w where should they contact you? Uh, thank you very much. So we're very happy to have uh, folks join us uh, from government, industry, and academia. Uh, the first step is really to email me, uh, glenn.hernandez at opedgesolutions.com, and I'd be happy to take their information and, and have them. We meet monthly, um, uh, virtually, um, over, over these platforms, and we are happy to discuss uh, the things at the moment uh, when it comes to things like policy that just came out recently or really things how organizations are embracing uh, the strategic aspects of, of zero trust. I'd like to add also in December uh, to what Brian said about foundational technologies. Uh, we had Dr. Um, Dr. Ross uh, with us from NIST and, and he was very adamant is that uh, the technology from the very beginning in its hardware and firmware and software need to be addressed uh, in, when looking at the assurance and, and confidence um, that you have the integrity in your infrastructure. And so uh, NIST has been on the forefront of trying to do that 
and we're very open to have folks uh, like uh, Dr. Ross and others in the community to help learn and share what they've learned with others so that we can level set uh, what we expect from Zero Trust and help organizations achieve what their purpose to do. Brian, somebody wants to find out about Zero Trust activities at Steel Cloud. Where should they go? Um, to our website, www.steelcloud.com. Excellent. We've been talking with Brian Hages, COO of Steel Cloud, and Glenn Hernandez, former U.S. Coast Guard captain, retired, former U.S. Coast Guard CISO, and chair of the AFCIA Zero Trust Strategy Subcommittee. Thank you, gentlemen. And thank you for watching another in the series of Compliance Automation with Steel Cloud. I'm Dave Gardy for Cybersecurity TV from our studios here near Washington, D.C. Thanks for joining us.